I would like to welcome you to this uh, special interview on investors' perspective on ESG reporting. We're living in times of change, uh, impacted by corona, uh, crisis in certain sectors, uh, growth in others, economic recession, uncertainty for all, uh, but also climate change and climate risk that we need to address as a society. Focusing on uh, the SDGs and developing new strategies for change. A lot of change is also happening in ESG reporting, uh, and we all see that efforts need to come together through uh, uh, the same journey to achieve consistency and comparable information. At Deloitte, we advise our clients uh, on sustainable strategies uh, through the lens of change in order to achieve uh, sustainable impacts, uh, measurements and reporting. I'm very excited to welcome here uh, our special guest, Anas, Anas uh, Schilde, is the Chief Investment Officer at Academica Pension, formerly known as MP Pension. Together with his team, he manages a portfolio of 130 billion Danish kroner. 8 billion Danish kroner of those are invested into Danish listed companies. In recent years, uh, Academica Pension has also focused on themes like sustainability, responsible investments, being a more active investor but also uh, themes like diversity and remuneration and climate risk. So Anas, the first question for you is really, why should companies uh, step up in this uh, uh, game of ESG reporting for investors at the moment? They should focus on this because we can and we must. And by that, I mean that over the last many years, our ability to collect and process data has grown uh, exponentially. So today we can actually monitor our businesses in many more ways than we could just a few years ago. And we must do so. We must do so because as a society we face uh, enormous uh, challenges, not least the climate crisis. So we need those data in order to steer clear of those uh, challenges. Yeah. So what are the different challenges that you face as academic pension and that you envision that other investors are facing in terms of gathering and comparing these uh, ESG data? Uh, I think what we hear from many of the companies that we invest in is that it's actually a huge task for them, a huge challenge for them to collect all these data points and uh, provide all this information in various reports. And I would say we have the same challenge because mm -hmm. what we do is actually an aggregation of what all our uh, companies in the portfolio do. Uh, and so it's, it's something that we all struggle with, I, I think, and as you also alluded to, uh, we need more standards and hopefully uh, they are coming, they are coming, uh, but uh, things are moving so fast in this area that regulation and uh, legislation will always be behind and we cannot wait for that. Uh, so we, we just have to manage through this, uh, I would say, almost rather chaotic period and, and still be ambitious and, and, and do as best we can to, to, to collect these Yes, so we also. need to manage the change uh, process uh, together, so to speak, as a community of investors and companies and advisors and other stakeholders in order to achieve uh, the objectives of change and a more uh, sustainable uh, world, so to speak. Mm. Uh, yeah, true. So which recommendations do you have for the audience uh, today in terms of being a listed company in Denmark? Uh, what should they do in terms of ESG reporting, uh, reporting on climate change, uh, mm. risks, for the upcoming uh, annual report here in 2020? Well, for a number of years, we have put a specific focus on a few topics, as you also mentioned, uh, in regard to Danish companies. First of all, I would like to say that uh, all, practically all Danish companies are very well run, are very well sort of on top of the, the risks in their business. But nevertheless, we do see a few things that sort of cut through uh, many uh, of the companies that we invest in. And these uh, areas are, have to do with uh, diversity, uh, both in management, but also all the way through down uh, the organizations. So that's something we focused on. We also focus quite a bit on remuneration, and particularly, of course, for top management. And then uh, lastly, uh, climate data. I mm -hmm. think that is probably the most important one because this is the most acute and the biggest uh, challenge that we do have. So that's something we're gonna keep pushing for. Uh, we've been asking in our dialogues with the companies and our formal letters to, to the boards uh, for companies to sign up to the TCFD framework. Uh, but still very few companies have done so far, so we're going to continue to push for that. And I think we're very likely actually to bring it into the AGMs as actual shareholder proposals from our side. Mm -hmm. 
That, that sounds good because I think that's some of the developments that we need to see in order to make uh, progress on this uh, journey to have some standardized uh, reporting on climate risk and how it impacts the, the company and how it impacts uh, financial reporting so we get it into financial measures. Mm. Any final recommendations for, for companies uh, aside from addressing uh, climate risk reporting? Yeah, certainly that's one issue. Another thing that's also in our focus is uh, tax reporting. I think uh, most companies do quite well in terms of uh, having formulated a tax policy, but we think we still need more tax transparency. Uh, and in particular, we think that it would be very useful if more companies, not just Ørsted, as the only company in C25 index, if more con companies followed their example and actually provided country by country uh, tax reporting. We know there are a lot of concerns out there re in regard to this, um, that it might be too much transparency, uh, but in our view, it's something that you, you can actually manage. Uh, I would just uh, say, take a look at what Ørsted are doing. Okay. Thank you, Anas, so much. Thank you. You're welcome.